Oh, welcome to the Avenues. Hi, everyone. I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed, and it's great to be here on the west side of San Francisco. I want to really thank our District Attorney, Brooke Jenkins, our Police Chief, Bill Scott, our Sheriff, Paul Miyamoto, and the Director of the Department of Emergency Management, Mary Ellen Carroll, as well as so many people who are joining us, including Damon, who's the owner of Noodle Stop, uh, Bill is here, who's the president of our Outer Sunset Merchants Association, and Eric Chang, who's the vice president of Stop Crime SF. Uh, we are here on the west side of town to just really call attention to all of the investments that I have placed in my budget that is before the Board of Supervisors as we speak, and including the supervisor who represents uh, this particular community, Supervisor Joe Lingardio. He could not be with us today because he's at the board, but he has been in complete support of the investments that we have made in order to ensure uh, public safety, not just on where everyone is focused, the center of town, uh, the Tenderloin, South of Market, and, and downtown areas of our city, but to make sure that the people in the West Side, hey Bill, the people in the West Side, uh, their voices are heard too, because we know that there are challenges here with car break-ins, with home invasions, with businesses that have been vandalized. And in fact, the chief is going to maybe talk a little bit about a crime that occurred, armed robbery on 20th Avenue, and an arrest was just made today to deal with that. And so it's so important, it's so important that we continue to make investments in our police department, in our in alternatives to policing, including our ambassadors, which are a part of these amazing communities, people who speak uh, Cantonese like some of our residents here, to ensure that there are eyes and ears on the street to respond to the challenges that exist in San Francisco. We know that public safety right now in the city is what everyone is talking about. We know that it is the number one concern, and it has to be reflected in our budget investments. Just yesterday, the police department started a new police academy class with one of the largest classes since before the pandemic. So we are really excited about our recruitment efforts to get more officers on the streets. We're excited about our ambassadors, including our retired police officers, where we want to add to every part of the city. But today's press conferences are about the people who live here, the people who work here, the people who deserve to have a safe community, and that's why we're gathered here today, to make it clear that we need to take care of our communities, wherever they are, all over San Francisco, and we need to make sure that the investments are made to keep people safe. So between now and the end of this week, in particular tomorrow, the Board of Supervisors will be deliberating the budget, and my hope is for them to keep our public safety budget intact, to make sure the Sheriff's Department, the Police Department, the DA's office, as well as our community ambassador programs continue to have the investments they need. Because this isn't just about policies, this is about the capacity to deliver on a promise. Our basic fundamental responsibility as leaders of this city is to deliver on public safety for every single resident that is a part of San Francisco. And that's why we are all here. So I want to thank you all so much for coming and weathering the storm. You know it's important to me because it's misting and I'm letting my hair get wet. But this is so critical for the success of our city, for the safety of our city, especially the safety of our residents. And we're really grateful to be here. And at this time, I want to ask our police chief, Bill Scott, to come forward and say a few words. Good morning, and thank you, Mayor Breed. Well, I'll just piggyback on a few things that the mayor says. First of all, we're extremely excited about yesterday's uh, academy class with 32 recruits. It's the largest class that we've had in three years. And that tells us that things are looking brighter on the horizon. You know, we're on pace to definitely hire 100 recruits this year, this coming year. And without the funding, we can't do that. So I really, really appreciate the budget that the mayor's put forth. 
Uh, things are looking brighter for us. Our applications are up significantly from where they were this time last year. Uh, they're not where they were pre-pandemic, but they are up significantly. And that is a good sign because, as we've said to, the, to you all before, what we end up in the academy in terms of numbers of recruits really is a function of how many people we can get to apply to this police department. And people are seeing that the city and the mayor is making investments in this police department and public safety, not just the police department, but public safety. They're seeing that the mayor has gathered a, a group of leaders that are working together. And I can't emphasize enough how important that is. We are working together in ways that in just recent years that, that we weren't able to do. And that should be exciting to everyone, I hope, because it's exciting to me. Uh, the robbery that the mayor mentioned, you know, that was due to diligent follow-up. But it takes people to do that. You know, when we have, you know, shootings or robberies or home invasion burglaries, if we don't catch the person at the scene, what has to happen is we have to have enough investigators to really put the energy and the time into these cases to be able to solve them. And that doesn't come without investment. So things are looking brighter. We still have a lot of work to do. We still have a lot of challenges. The mayor mentioned uh, car break-ins. Even though we're down significantly from where we were in 2019, it's still a problem in our city that we have to deal with. And we need the police officers on the ground to do that. And I'm so excited with what the future looks like. And I wanna thank our mayor and thank all of our partners who you were here from today who are working together as a team. And I hope that that brings some hope to, to you all and the, the residents of our city because we are. And we will definitely get things done and make it better. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you, everyone, for your time and attention. Thank you. Recently, our uh, Chair of Paul Miyamoto made an announcement to provide some additional resources of boots on the grounds to increase our capacity to address the challenges around public safety. So we're really grateful for his leadership and his partnership in these efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Sheriff Paul Miyamoto. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and good morning, everyone. The Chief just mentioned it. It's gonna take a collective effort with all of us here. The police department, the sheriff's office, the DA's office, the mayor's support, Department of Emergency Management, and the community that's represented here to make a difference. Uh, the chief mentioned the challenges that we have with staffing. The mayor mentioned the money and the budget being committed to help address that challenge. But in the meantime, we still have issues that we have to address immediately on the street. We have symptoms of what people are perceiving as a blight, but what we see as something that we can help fix with the resources and the collective effort that we're putting out there. Our department, the Sheriff's Office, stands behind and with the police department when they make the arrests, the DA's office when they prosecute in the courtroom. We're right in between. And we want to make sure that the people that we are talking about, the people that are out on the street, the people that are committing crimes are held accountable, but accountable with compassion. And we want to make sure that a part of our collective public safety effort involves the opportunity for rehabilitation, the opportunity for sobriety, the opportunity to follow whatever path that individual needs to get help and to get better. Because when they get better, the community gets better. And that's what we're focused on right now. Some people volunteer to get that help. Some people sometimes need to be compelled to get that help. And we have been working collaboratively to make sure all of those paths are open and available to people out there that need that help. We don't need to be just about punishment. We don't need to be just about people being sentenced. We need to be about getting people the services as well. And the commitment we have here, the Sheriff's Office, doesn't have ambassadors. We have retirees that work in different areas. We don't have police service aides. We have cadets that work in different areas. What we do have are deputies. And we're moving our resources into specific areas of the city so that the police department and the chief and his personnel can redirect their resources to help everyone in the city. That's what our goal is, that's what we're working on, and I'm very happy to be standing here today as we work towards that effort with our budgets and with the work that we do on the ground. Thank you. Thank you. Another one of our public safety partners who's been doing a incredible job is our district attorney, Brooke Jenkins. 
Good morning, everyone, and thank you, uh, Madam Mayor, for your dedication to the mission of public safety for San Francisco. Uh, I want to echo something that Chief Scott said, which is that we are we are seeing a new time here in San Francisco where we are working together to solve the problems that are of top priority to San Franciscans. Uh, this is a new day where the four of us can stand up here together and say that we are working towards the same mission, which is to deliver public safety to a city that so desperately deserves to have it. Um, and so I want to thank the mayor's office uh, for making sure that, that public safety agencies were a priority at a time when we know that our city um, is facing a, a budget situation um, that many cities around the country are facing, uh, but that she has prioritized public safety to make sure that there are no deficits within our agencies um, that would impede us from being able to serve the city of San Francisco. Uh, as a part of that, uh, she ensured that we were able to um, have a supplemental addition of three narcotics prosecutors um, mid-cycle uh, earlier this year to add to my office's ability to prosecute the increasing number of drug dealing cases that we are being provided from the San Francisco Police Department. Uh, she made sure that the funding for those positions to go forward was included as a part of our budget. And today we are hoping that uh, the Board of Supervisors work, will continue that funding, will approve that funding, so that we can continue to try to make sure that we are putting a stop to the open air drug markets that are, that are affecting our downtown area. We know that we have to set a new tone in San Francisco, that lawlessness will not be acceptable. And a part of that is making sure that downtown gets that message because that will spread across this city to neighborhoods just like where we are at today. Uh, and so I just wanna say thank you to the mayor's office, thank you to our partners, uh, Chief Scott, Sheriff Miyamoto, to the head of our uh, Department of Emergency Management, Mary, Mary Ellen Carroll, who is here today, uh, because jointly we will achieve what we need to in this city, which is providing public safety to our residents and business owners. Um, as, as one anecdote, I do want to mention that when we have the staffing that we need in our office, we are able to achieve great results in the courtroom. And today I'm pleased to announce that we just got a conviction, uh, our first conviction in a narcotics dealing trial uh, yesterday. Um, where a jury of 12 San Franciscans decided that enough was enough and that someone who was dealing fentanyl on our streets had to be held accountable. And those are the results that we can bring when we have the right funding and we have the right staffing. And so that is attributable to this partnership that we have here. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam DA, and congratulations on your great work. Um, at this time, I want to introduce the owner of Noodle Stop and ask Damon to come forward to say a few words. Hello, 大家好，我係一面資源負責人 Damon。啊，好高興今日市長同埋各位官員嚟到我哋鋪頭啊，作為一個演講。咁我作為三藩市嘅一個居民同埋一個。啊，商家咁我都希望為三藩市出翻一分力。咁啊，作為一個誒、呃、三藩市嘅安全問題，同埋增加警力，同埋誒打擊老天誒、呃、毒品嗰啲，咁我都係覺得係好支持嘅。而且係每一位三藩市市民都應該係支持呢啲誒工作嘅。多謝大家 ，thank you。As the owner of Noodle Shop, uh, Noodle Stop, I wanted to um, uh, thank everyone for being here, and uh, I wholeheartedly support um, the mayor's effort to ex uh, to um, rebuild a police staffing, expanding police alternatives, and also uh, crack down on open drug sales. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Damon. We really appreciate your work and your advocacy and. And also, we're grateful for your establishment, along with a lot of the businesses here. So to all of the press, when we are done with this press conference, please take a walk and eat at one of these establishments to show Noriega some love. And at this time, I want to ask the Outer Sunset Merchant Association president, uh, Bill, to come up. Um, he is out here at Noriega. He's 
you know, in other parts of the Richmond working really hard to support businesses here. We appreciate his work and his advocacy. Come on up, Bill. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone, and Josan. So I want to thank uh, the mayor and super, uh, super, uh, District Court Supervisor and Gradio is not here today for their, their support that they have given us in the past several, actually several months. As you know, the mayor mentioned, we, we passed a supplemental income about three months ago, and that was to help support the, the police officers for overtime and, and most importantly, our ambassadors. We have the, some ambassadors here. They're the uh, subsides from the city hall, the ambassadors. And then the, the police ambassadors that we've had that are retired that has had a significant impact in the neighborhood. People don't know, but these guys are fantastic. Uh, three weeks ago, we had an incident at the Whole Wall Pizza where um, they had a guy that uh, was very inebriated at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, fortunate enough for us that we had two ambassadors a block away. They saw what was happening. And most importantly, also, my wife works at the Whole Wall Pizza. So she was observing all this. So the guy was making a big scene in the Whole Wall Pizza, and then he was also uh, uh, stopping traffic in the middle block on 19th and 20th Irving. So consequently, the two ambassadors came down, uh, and they were able to defuse the situation. And if it wasn't for them, that we would probably have, that probably would have escalated to a more serious problem. So once again, the ambassadors are a significant uh, part of the police department, and also, as you know, they augment uh, the police department. They don't have weapons. But if something happens, they have a radio, and they call uh, the station or a radio car. In our case, uh, the radio car came within five minutes of the situation. So it's important, like the mayor mentioned, tomorrow or today, uh, the, the importance of having the, the public safety, the police officers, the ambassadors, and we have to, it's imperative, we have to endorse this. Because if we don't, uh, it's, it's going to get kind of nasty here. So uh, once again, uh, it's very important. So thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you all my fellow police officer friends because I've been with the department. I worked with the Chief's Advisory Board for the past 30 years. Uh, and a lot of my friends are cops. I think I have one civilian friend that works in Muni, but other than that, all my friends are all cops. So thank you guys for all you do. I appreciate it. And once again, very important to be cognizant of the voting tomorrow and see what you want because if nothing's going to happen, something's going to happen worse. And one, one last note, on Irving Street, we had an uh, uh, arson five months ago. Never had an arson on Irving Street, never. Uh, the flower shop there was uh, torn down, but was burned down. And the young lady, Sonia, has been there for 60 years, and she's now back there. Three days later, we had another incident at Dirty Nelly's. with a bar. It's an Irish bar. And I noticed that the parklet was chopped down or was taken down. So I asked the question, well, what happened? Someone at 4 o'clock in the morning tore down their parklet, took to the studs, took the woods and everything else. And we can't have that in our neighborhoods. We never had this kind of stuff in Irving Street. Because over the years, we've always had uh, uh, burglaries and robbery. That was, that was the norm. But now everything, once again, has escalated, and it's gotten pretty bad. But the crime has gone down because of the police, the ambassadors, and, of course, the support of the mayor. Um, so thank you, Mayor, for everything, and let's get the job done here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, for putting it into perspective. And just the whole point of this is uh, for folks to reach out to their respective members of the Board of Supervisors to make it clear that they support our public safety package as a whole, which includes the police officers, which includes the police department budget, the district attorney's budget, the sheriff's budget, the ambassadors, and both the neighborhood ambassadors, the retired officer ambassadors, um, Urban Alchemy, and so many other folks who are out there working to do everything to keep our, our city safe. This is a package, and the goal, again, is public safety, which is the most important issue facing our city at this time. Our final speaker for today is a person who is the vice president of Stop Crime SF. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Eric Chang. Thank you, Mayor. Da Jia Hao. It's great to be here today. Some really great points have already been made, and it's raining, and so I'm going to do my best to keep this as short as possible. My name is Eric Chang. I'm a lawyer for the state of California, a dad, and a resident of San Francisco. I'm here on behalf of a neighborhood organization, Stop Crime. We are a group of neighbors working to create a safer city for everybody. I'm here today to express support for the mayor's budget proposal. The mayor's plan outlines several key efforts that put public safety at the forefront. One important aspect of the budget proposal is the commitment to meeting long-term police hiring needs. It's no secret that San Francisco 
has had a shortage of police officers. This has affected response times, clearance rates, and community engagement. But by allocating funding to hiring more officers, the mayor is taking a proactive step to, taking, to putting many of these gaps behind us. At Stop Crime, we're also very aware that the over-reliance on police can bring about its own problems. And so in addition to hiring more officers, the budget proposal emphasizes effective alternatives to policing. San Francisco has been a leader in transitioning non-police work away from police, whether it's the street response teams or the community ambassadors or the bar attendants. These programs help police focus on police work. Finally, the mayor's proposal is a step towards finding a solution to the public health crisis that's playing out on the streets. She's incorporating lessons from the past with an eye towards the future, and it sends a strong message that San Francisco cares about all of its residents. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate you all being here. And are there any questions for anyone specifically about what we're talking about here today? Uh, so there was a rally yesterday from groups that are concerned about some of the cuts that are being made to some of those departments uh, for social services and a few other things. Can you talk about the need? Can you, can you first ask the questions related to this press conference? My, my question is, can you talk a little bit about the difficulty in having cuts in some portions and funding public service as, as a priority? So it's more complicated because to be clear, for example, in our child care resources, there were no cuts to any programs. This is money over $400 million in this particular budget, specifically for child care, that will sit unspent for years. And regardless of what people are talking about as it relates to universal child care, because the voters voted on this, there are limits to what this money can be spent to. And in fact, this current fiscal year, all of the resources allocated for all the things that the child care community wanted to do was not spent and will not necessarily get spent. So it's not about cuts. It's about making changes to address some of the challenges. We had a $780 million budget deficit. And let's put this in perspective since we want to talk about this because while everybody else was laying people off in the city and county of San Francisco, not only did city workers not get laid off, they got a raise in the midst of a global pandemic. Not only did we see increases in investments in food security, in public safety and other community resources, we saw funding go from this to this because of our federal support. And nonprofits, many who may not have been able to even set up shop, still received grant funding that we allocated to them, whether they were doing the work or not. And the point is, we are at a different time. So even though there may be some shifts and potential perceived cuts, the fact is, many of these organizations are still being made whole. And there are, there's a shift because we're coming out of this pandemic. There are some things that are needed and some things that are not needed, and we're making some adjustments. And the adjustments involve making sure that the thing that San Franciscans care about more than anything else right now is how do we make sure that someone does not get hurt because someone's in the midst of committing a crime, that we're doing everything we can to make sure there are officers and ambassadors and people and eyes and ears on the streets to deal with what people are impacted by, that folks know that criminals cannot come to San Francisco and get away with committing crimes and not be held accountable. So that's what I say, because we need to put it in perspective. Everyone's crying about a cut but it is not exactly in terms of how they are crafting it, which means that for those of you who have any interest to in getting down into the weeds of the budget and looking at the perspective of how these organizations have grown considerably, not just since the pandemic, but since I've been mayor and what we've had to do to make some adjustments, people are still gonna be made whole, they're still gonna be doing business, and we're still gonna be moving this city forward, but this investment is desperately needed in public safety. This is the 11th hour, the proverbial 11th hour, in which your message was to the Board of Supervisors as they go into these last days of negotiating. Well, the message has been, been very clear 
because and, and I'm hoping that they are hearing from their constituents as well, because I hear from them. It is public safety, public safety on all levels. The need to see officers, ambassadors and people walk in the beats, the need to make sure that when a crime is committed, that someone is held accountable. This is coming from all over communities throughout San Francisco. We know that certain areas are more challenged than others, but my message is we have got to listen to the people who we represent. And uh, the, the, as I said earlier, one of the biggest priorities is to make sure as leaders that we have safe cities, that we are investing in keeping the residents of our city safe. And that has got to be a priority. No chipping away at a little bit here and a little bit there to pay for a neighborhood pet project. Because what good are those neighborhood pet projects if people don't feel safe? So we have to be, we have to make this the number one priority. Leanne. Um, some businesses that say, um, for example, uh, someone by the name of David Lee who owns Taqueria who is saying that he's going to close his two businesses because he never got help from the city. Mm -hmm. What do you say to him and others who are that close to closing or, or have made up their mind already because safety was... I, I do. I, I will say that, you know, some of the programs that we've invested in for small businesses have really done remarkable things. Um, first year free where new businesses that open uh, get all city fees waived has been incredible. Our uh, uh, various shines programs from Office of Economic and Workforce Inve Development uh, uh, where we've been investing in helping people with their parklets, with their build outs and, and, and supporting various neighborhoods. People will need to apply. They have to do they do have to go through a process, but there are grants and there are no interest loans. There are, you know, when, when some of the windows have been broken, there's a broken window fund that we help to uh, support businesses. So I think that it might be true for some businesses, but I would just say to any small business that they should reach out to the Office of Economic and Workforce Development, because on the one hand, you have someone who's, who's struggling. On the other hand, you have, I've met business owners who've gotten help who are in business because they were able to get the help at the right point when they needed it. And so we want to protect our small businesses. There's money in my budget currently. And 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 look, I know that the, the board is looking at everything. They're looking at the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. I don't want them to put that money on reserves because, as you said, these businesses, they need this money now. They don't need a city bureaucracy to get a few dollars in order to get by and pay staff and keep their doors open. So for us, we need to invest. There's money to invest in our budget and we just ask small businesses to reach out to us um, do we have um, any of the press I'm sorry yeah in the back there it's actually for Chief Scott if I may yeah uh, Chief uh, you mentioned an uptick uh, or a more a higher interest in cadets why? Why are people thinking about joining the San Francisco Police Department more so now than before? Well, I can, so first of all, we're competitive. Um, as you know, the board passed a, a package for the police officers to increase their salaries, and that made us very competitive in this region. And this region, the comp competition is pretty stiff. The other thing is I, I do believe people are seeing the investments that are being made in this city and public safety in this police department, and that, that matters. You know, um, if you're choosing to choose between one police department or another, you look at a lot of things. You look at benefits. You look at salaries. You look at support. You look at how that police department and its officers are treated. And when those things start to go on the rise, I think it, we become more desirable for people. And I, our recruiters are doing a lot of work to go out and try to get the right candidates on this job. Because it's, not, it's a numbers game, but it's not. It's also a game of quality. We want to get the right people who want to serve the city with a heart of service. And I think those are the types of people that we, we are attracting. The salaries, the support for this police department has really kind of done a 180 in the last two years, three years. Um, and those things matter. And, you know, we, we, it's more than just, it's more than just, joining a police department to join a police department. Candidates choose carefully who they want to work for, and we hope that our folks are here for 30 years or more, 
and all those things they look at and I think those things are turning around so we're seeing we're seeing the results with our application thank you we're um, done with the press and so if there are any other questions from the public we'll take those at that time um, so thank you everybody for being here today Sun Tai Ging Hong Ping Ping Ong Ong appreciate it thank you